What's up guys? I'm here at the vMix booth and they've just announced a whole bunch of new features. One of them is direct integration with Zoom video conferencing. So check out this video, it's pretty cool. All right, here we go. Okay. So, yeah, the, the hot new feature for 27 is, is Zoom integration. Oh, yeah. When you go to add input, uh, you've now got the Zoom input. Nice. And so we'll go, okay. From here, we can host a meeting or join a meeting. Wow. So, hosting means logging in with your own details. And if you've got, say, an enterprise account, as, as we know, Paul, because we've done a heap of training on this, yeah. you can gain access to 1080p content. Wow. And then, if you, if you don't have a premium account, then you've got access to lower resolutions. Okay, that's awesome. The Zoom API that we use is a 30 megabit per second cap. It's pretty good. So, so that means about five 1080p sources or a lot of 720p or less sources. You can do five 1080p sources? Yeah. At about 30 megabits a second. Wow. Yeah, that's the total. If you added them all. So you do really hot, like you do a heap of high ones or start backing them off and they'll back themselves up. So if you keep on adding inputs, it'll just start dropping the resolution on random inputs. So you bring all of your um, things in, kind of like Zoom Micro, and you can record the old CD. That's awesome. So that's pretty cool. That's our, that's our hot new feature. The, the hot new adjustment is for outputs, for external outputs. So we can now use something like a Declan card and go SDI for individual outputs. We've never been able to do it before. So it means gaining access to these. You so can go out on for any of your outputs there. But it also means that you can always Oh, can you stream to four now? Can, I think you can stream to four. Well, stream to three. Stream because three. we've got three streaming destinations that you can set up. But you can now go to three. Use any of the four to stream. So that'll be handy. Especially for people doing like uh, multilingual streams or uh, adding uh, sign language overlays or any of that stuff. Paid content, that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I like the new uh, mouse pad, by the way. Yeah, that's a good one, right? It's very professional, right? Uh, <laughs> very professional. <laughs> I like how you put that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now, layers, layers have had a bit of an update. Really? So we've added a layer manager. So under the layer section, you now gain access to all of your layers here. And move, crop, and border handling can happen here in here. So if we go to move, we can, we can move things around, we can snap, we couldn't snap before, you could do that in GT Title Designer, but you couldn't do it in VMix. That's nice. You can move things really accurately and resize them really accurately to the pixel, so you can get really tight, like dialed in shots. Back in the day, borders couldn't... Oh, so every source can have a border? Oh yeah. yeah. Wow, so that's so pretty new. Borders right now. Yeah. Historically, borders so couldn't real, like you couldn't merge from one crop to a new crop or something like that. They would disappear and then come back because they're pre-rendered borders. We've totally updated the engine, so it's a whole new way of doing it live. So borders wow. could now move. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, everyone. I mean, so so now if we go from this shot to this shot, every border just resizes and reshapes dynamically, which we were we weren't able to do in the past. So it's really good that this has happened. Wow. Um, a ton of new shortcuts. It's something like 150 new. 150. Wow. A lot of them are for layer handling, so we've never had the ability to say. On layer number six, I want to crop the right hand side in by this much. And that will give you the ability to do things like add to a stream deck dial. Again, the stream deck dials are a new feature. Yes, I like that. Okay. We can do things like cropping that's that's cool. That's cropping the cropping on the dial. Wow. And then that's interesting. Because the dials 
because the dials have uh, the ability to be stacked. Um, let me explain that better. The, the Elgato software, you can have a function stack, so you can just add shortcut, 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 and every time you press the dial, it goes to the next shortcut. So now I'm looking at the pan layer X, and now I press it again, and I'm Y adjusting, I'll press it again. I'm cropping, I'll press it again, and you can cycle through. Because you just add as many shortcuts on that stack. Wow. So, the, so the layer stack, the, the shortcut stacking is going to be pretty cool. You do the exact same thing with things like uh, adjusting your colors. So I've got the green shift at the moment on on this input and preview. So I'm adjusting the green. Wow. And now I'll switch and I'll adjust the blue. Oh man. And then I can tap the screen and that'll just reset that, that blue shift. And then if I go to the green one, I can tap it and reset it back to the green. And it all live updates in your thumbnail as well. So that's pretty Jeez, that's awesome. The last one which I can probably show you. Is in the web browser, or the web controller, we've now got oh, live updating. Wow! So that's pretty good. So all of your thumbnails updated about two frames a second, which is enough to get make sure that your person's in the right in the shot, that the person you're cutting to is correctly wow. positioned. We've not had that in the past. So fully live web controller, which would be quite handy for some people. All right, so that's it. I'm going to have more videos coming from IBC soon. So don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments below what else you'd like to see. All right, bye, guys.